Now that we've got a little bit of background on site capture and how it integrates with Microsoft SharePoint, let's go ahead and process some documents. On the left hand side here I've got all my modules within site capture. In this case I'm going to click on capture. And I'm going to go ahead and process some invoices. You can see when I first open the application it prompts me for the types of documents I want to process. In this case we'll pick our accounting invoices template. And I've got a couple of scanned documents in here. I just went to the copier and scanned them over. We'll go ahead and pick one. And we'll start the capture process. In this case, I can go ahead and enter information about the batch I'm processing. You can see that it automatically gets named with a date and time stamp. I can put in notes and it actually keeps a history of what's done on this batch. In this case, we'll click OK. You'll see that it imports three separate one-page invoices. And down here you can see the columns that I'm actually going to capture. So I'm done with my capture process. Let's go ahead to the indexing. What the software is doing right now it's, is, is it's actually converting the pages to searchable text and then it's going to highlight some key terms that I've looked for. In this case we're going to capture the invoice number, the invoice date, and the vendor name. You can see that on my mouse I've got tagged to the, uh, the pointer, my first field, which is invoice number. I pre-programmed the software to go ahead and highlight the invoice number, which is a six-digit numeric. And when I highlight it, you can see all I have to do is click, and it automatically populates the index or column fields. Next is my date, automatically highlighted that for me. Click on date, and then I'll click on the vendor name. Once I'm done with the first document, it goes right to the second document. So you can see it's quick and easy, just point and click. And then I've got my last document. Now these fields, before I finish up, there's a number of ways we can actually fill them in. This is one of the simplest, which is OCR assisted indexing or point and click indexing. I can also fill them in manually. I can put in default values. I can have a drop down list. We can populate them with barcode values or other types of values as well. So in this case, let's go ahead and click on the vendor. And you can see we're finished. It prompts me for the next step in my scanning workflow, which is OCR. So now it's going to actually convert those invoices to text. We'll click Done. Now I'm going to do some quality assurance. So in this case, what it gives me is a little spreadsheet with a row for each invoice. And you can see as I go from row to row, I can view the particular document. And I actually have the ability um, to view the information to make sure it's correct. So this is an eyeball check before we actually migrate the information into SharePoint. I'll click Done, click Migrate, click OK. It's going to take those documents. It's going to build a vendor folder for me and then automatically name the file and populate column information within SharePoint. And it tells me I'm complete. So let's go ahead and view our final result. So I'll come into SharePoint, come to my accounting site, click on my invoices, and you can see now that I've got a quick vendor folder. Okay, I told Site Capture when you migrated over, build a folder for the vendor. And then within that folder you can see I've got the invoices I just processed. And I named them vendor-invoice number. And you can see over here I've also got the column information all filled in. So I can do column-based searching. And these are text searchable PDFs as well. Let's go ahead and go back to Site Capture. Let's close our batch. And now we're going to try a different document type. I'm going to do a, a legal document type. And what this has is I've got barcode separator sheets. So the index fields now are going to be automatically filled with information as I import my documents. So I'll go ahead and select one of my documents, start my capture process. And you can see that it's automatically filling in these sheets from a barcode separator page. So you can see I picked up one document, but that document contained two separate documents. All right, so I picked up the file, split it into two separate documents based on those separator pages. 
Let's go ahead and index. Just to show you, I'll tab through these fields, which already have been populated. We'll OCR the document or documents. Click done, and I'm going to migrate these into SharePoint. Okay. I also my uh, I'm doing a dual migration here, migrating to um, shared folders as well as sending to SharePoint. So what it's going to do for me in this case, in the previous example, I had an accounting um, site with an invoices document library. It was a pre-existing library. In this case, I actually created brand new libraries within the root of SharePoint. So if I come back here and I look at my default document library in SharePoint, you can see that it created case libraries for me and within there I've got a document type folder and then in this case I migrated both the OCR and the image which is an option as well with a custom naming scheme and it built all of that um, automatically without having to pre-build the document library within SharePoint so let's go back again to the application and I'm going to show you some basic setup stuff so in here in my document types, I can actually come in and if I add a document type and I come to my template, you can see there's a number of templates I can use, but in this case I'm going to point it at my SharePoint server. And let's go ahead and type in the address. And then I'll enter my credentials. Click Test Connection. It's actually going to talk to SharePoint. It's going to bring back all my information. So now I've got my SharePoint web or sites. If you look here, I've got the root site, my accounting site. So we'll click on my accounting site. And then we'll choose a library. You can see I've got multiple libraries in here. If I choose my invoices, what the application does, it goes to SharePoint and pulls down all the custom columns. So you can see here I've got invoice number, invoice date, and vendor name. So it's very simple to import and configure this for an existing SharePoint installation. Likewise, let's go ahead and take a peek at uh, that legal barcode sample I gave you. Let's go through the configuration. I'm going to go through to the end here. And we'll choose our migration and we'll look at our SharePoint migration. So I have a few options when it comes to how I want to migrate my information into SharePoint. Taking a second to talk to the SharePoint server, bringing back my information. This looks familiar, right? Just like in the template, I enter my site address and my credentials and it brings back the information. But in this case, it's not an existing document library. I want to actually create the document library based on one of my fields or columns that I enter. What this does is give you the flexibility to automatically create SharePoint libraries based on what the user enters. Um, this is nice because uh, it's less configuration for the administrators of the SharePoint system and it puts a little bit of the power into the user's hands. The other option I have, I can manually create fields as well. And up here you can see I've got a bunch of different options. I can choose the fields that I want to migrate or the columns that I want to migrate into SharePoint. I can set up custom file naming so that when the files come over into SharePoint they're custom named based on the index or column information I'm entering in SciCapture. And I can also build custom folder structures within the SharePoint application. So that's a quick overview of SciCapture and what it can do for you uh, in a SharePoint environment.